Hello, my name is Sam Feltham and welcome to Expert Interviews here on Smash the Fat. Uh, with me today, all the way from Brazil, is Dr. Jose Carlos Sueto. How's it going, Jose? Hey, doing fine. Thank you very much for inviting me. <laughs> and I was, I was trying to get the pronunciation just right. So, Jose, isn't it? Jose, yeah, Jose, 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 right. Yeah, <laughs> I was just trying to get it just right because uh, as I was talking about my girlfriend's French, so my French accent's getting better because that sort of sounds French a little bit, even though it's Portuguese. But uh -huh. that, that's fine. Doesn't matter. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, Jose. Um, cool. Uh, so uh, the reason that I wanted to get you on today um, is because you're becoming one of the most prominent uh, Brazilian physicians over there that's starting to say maybe there is something to carbohydrate restriction when it comes to health. And we're going to be talking about uh, beating the bulge in Brazil today. Um, and not just the bulge, but the malnutrition uh, epidemic that's kind of going on there, which is called the double burden of malnutrition and obesity. Um, so you've got a bit of a double whammy there. Um, we'll get into that later on. Uh, but before we do all that, um, I want to find out kind of why you wanted to become a doctor, how you became a doctor, and why you started to get more and more interested in health and nutrition specifically. Okay, so Sam, it's kind of funny because uh, I did not have a keen interest in nutrition and health before 2011, actually. So uh, I've been practicing medicine for 20 years now, uh, but uh, it all happened by uh, serendipity, okay? Uh, I was listening to a podcast uh, in 2011. And it was a podcast about uh, scientific skepticism mm -hmm. called Skepticality. Uh, and they were interviewing this guy that I ne had never heard of called Gary Taubes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, when I listened to that interview, uh, I stopped everything I was doing. And I said, okay, this guy is basically telling me that everything I have ever learned on nutrition and health is is wrong and upside down okay but you could tell that uh, he knew what he was talking about he was you know talking on randomized clinical trials he was talking about the uh, Framingham study so uh, you could tell this was no bullshit so uh, as soon as I finished listening to it I downloaded his book into my Kindle and well here, here I am. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so uh, I could I could not uh, stop uh, studying and reading about this issue because it was so amazing for me that we could be so dead wrong on nutrition and health. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and it is, it's kind of been a bit of an epic failure, kind of the past forty years, and you've been um, kind of trying to debunk that for for everybody in Brazil via your blog. Which is www. Make sure you put the www. Because otherwise it doesn't mm -hmm. work. Um, low carb dash paleo. Com. Br. And you can check out all the stuff there if you're a Portuguese reader and speaker and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. And recently, Brazil kind of came out. Was it within the last year or maybe the last eighteen months that Brazil kind of came out with some new food guidelines? With kind of there, it's almost ten commandments, isn't it? Yeah, uh, I think that is a very welcome uh, move. Uh, although this is, uh, as I understand, is not a official uh, thing yet. This was like uh, a hearing, a Congress hearing. Uh, so they are uh, trying to come up with new guidelines, uh, and those guidelines uh, would be a major advance because they actually. You know, instead of making some silly food pyramid or my plate or whatever, they are pushing for real food. Okay, and uh, but what happens actually is, um, is that although uh, those people that are actually studying it are making some progress in their thinking, the regular uh, registered dietitian out there is still preaching uh, the food pyramid. Uh, just. A couple of days ago, 
a patient of mine showed his smartphone to me and uh, he was showing a email that he got from a registered dietitian and the email literally said that he should not adopt a low carb diet because his kidneys would fail, his liver would uh, fail, uh, he would lose his muscle mass, he would lose bone mass, you know, all the old stuff. So uh, even if uh, the government, you know, st uh, starts pushing real food, but we still have to change a lot of registered dietitians and doctor minds, and uh, this is a huge task, as you know. Yeah, yeah, it's very, very difficult, and it's it's really deep-seated beliefs um, that a lot of these dietitians and doctors have, um, but it's unfortunately not really based on too much evidence. Um, it's kind of these beliefs that were kind of around in the 60s and 70s and they've kind of continued to be the conventional wisdom and thankfully um, people like Gary Tobbs and, and other uh, journalists, scientists out there have kind of debunked this but there's still a battle going on um, and a battle that's kind of going on in Brazil at the moment is this double burden of malnutrition and obesity. So that's where we kind of have these two um, kind of warring factions of people that aren't getting enough food to live on and you've got people that are having, um, they're becoming obese. Um, so um, kind of the conventional wisdom is that those that are malnourished obviously aren't eating enough, which is true enough, but then those that are obese are becoming far, uh, are eating far too much. Um, so what is going on here, um, and, and why is it particularly happening in Brazil? Yeah, uh, you know, uh, I lived in the U.S. Uh, for a year, 15 years ago. And 15 years ago, uh, I was amazed when I saw people eating and snacking everywhere all day, you know, the vending machines. We didn't have vending machi machines 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, I remember I would talk to my family and friends and say, you know, it's amazing. On the hospital corridors, people were walking and snacking. Uh, you, you didn't see that in Brazil at that time. Now, Sam, all that has changed. Uh, it is exactly the same here now. You have vending machines everywhere. Uh, you have people snacking on high carbs, very processed food, all day, every day. Okay, uh, so the food environment uh, has, you know, just uh, converged into the same uh, terrible diet. Uh, but you're right, uh, uh, when, when we look at the poor people, uh, they are uh, getting fat fast, maybe faster, okay? And it's become very clear that, uh, you know, if, if you are well to do, uh, you can go and eat your salmon and eat your salad, but if you don't have much money, you go for the instant noodles, okay? You go for the soda, which is, which is very cheap. Uh, uh, so junk food is, is, is cheap everywhere. Uh, the, uh, where I live, I live in the southmost part of the country. Uh, this is not the area where you have the most of the very bad poverty. So I don't really see uh, undernutrition here. What, what we see even in favelas are, uh, you know, fat kids eating junk food. So uh, it's being uh, democratized, you can, tell, you can say, like, uh, now everybody has, uh, you know, the right to eat junk food everywhere. It's crazy, isn't it? Absolutely crazy. Um, and this is kind of um, an observation that's kind of going around the world, um, particularly kind of in um, developing countries um, where, um, for instance, in, in Western Sahara, um, in the refugee camps there, um, in the refugee camps, you have kind of obese mothers with malnourished, um, stunted children. So, you know, um, the old paradigm would say that the mother is just eating more and kind of um, stopping her children from eating enough food. Um, but kind of this, this new wave of thought that's actually an old thought 
um, just coming back with a vengeance, um, says that the particular food that they're eating um, is, is causing them to store more body fat. Um, and kind of superficially, they're not eating more. Um, they're just starting to store more and more body fat. Um, and something that you also see in Western Sahara is this whole um, thing where you have the, um, the adolescents who, who've got stunted growth, but as soon as they start to kind of go past 15, and some of them start to become obese, despite the fact that they've had 15 years of kind of, you know, food restriction in, in the whole. I mean, is that something that kind of they're seeing in the favelas and things? <laughs> Oh yes, yes, I, I'm sure. Uh, you know, uh, one of the things that uh, got my interest when I read, uh, you know, Tao's work, and then I went on to read uh, basically everything I could get on my hands, uh, is uh, the full partitioning thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, and when you think about it, uh, when people think out of the obesity area, like uh, you know, for example, uh, anabolic steroids. Everybody knows. Everybody knows that those uh, steroids will partition nutrients to the muscle. Okay, and nobody questions that. I mean, you can get a girl and you put her in on steroids, and she'll get more muscle than you and me. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, and people will naturally say, okay, these steroids are directing, are partitioning fuel to the muscle. Uh, when you have a excess of glucose. Uh, glucose corticoids, I'm sorry, you, you know, corticosteroids. <laughs> uh, when you have an excess of those, uh, exogenous by, you know, drugs or endogenous by disease, uh, people uh, accumulate fat, uh, 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 even, you know, belly fat. Uh, and doctors will very fast uh, realize that it is the hormones that are partitioning fat. But when you talk that, you know, insulin does that, does that, and that some foods will preferentially raise insulin and partition uh, nutrients into body fat, then people say, no, it's overeating and sloughness. Uh, so uh, it is amazing that uh, it's like nutrition put blinders on people. When you talk on nutrition science, they just cannot reason as they reason when they're talking about, you know, steroids or uh, uh, glucocorticoids. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and so do you think that this kind of um, this new wave of thought is getting some more traction? Because you, you've appeared on, on national TV kind of talking about this. Um, so is there starting to become a bit more traction in Brazil for this or is there still some real pushback? Um, it is definitely getting more traction. Uh, and I am actually uh, amazed at how fast things seem to be changing uh, since 2013. Wow. Uh, 2013, for some reason, was a, a, a game-changing game year. Uh, and I think language is a barrier for that. So many of uh, the books, uh, you know, Taubes or uh, uh, Rob Wolfs or Mark Sisson, or uh, Nina Teichholz, uh, all those books have never been translated into Portuguese. So uh, if somebody reads English and is uh, interested in the area, well, then you can go to Amazon or anything and, and buy it. Uh, but in, last year, we had uh, Wheat Belly and Grain Brain translated into Portuguese. Brilliant. And uh, those books uh, made a dent, OK? Uh, and uh, one of the reasons I actually was interviewed on TV was because of uh, Wit Valley, okay? Uh, because uh, since my uh, my blog uh, has uh, now, if you if you look for low carb or paleo uh, in uh, Google, my blog rates first. So when the journalist wants to interview somebody, he Google's it and he finds m me, <laughs> okay? Uh, so uh, it, it's gaining it's gaining traction, uh, and uh, something interesting also is uh, you know uh, from the beginning when I started blogging, uh, I, I I was always careful to be very evidence based. So everything I, I write has the reference the articles the randomized clinical trials backing it up. Uh, 
because I was very afraid that my fellow doctors would say, well, you know, this guy is suddenly became a quack, okay, what's he talking about low carb and diet? Uh, but for, uh, I, I had the pleasant surprise that this didn't happen, actually, uh, many people, uh, you know, I bump into doctors in the hospital halls and they tell me not only that they are reading the blog, but they are, you know, uh, doing low carb themselves and losing weight. Brilliant, brilliant. So yeah, this is something that you're actually <laughs> applying within your own clinic and you're actually seeing other doctors starting to apply, at least with themselves. And um, are, they, are they getting results and are you getting results with patients? Is it working? Yeah, it is, uh, because uh, uh, I did not mention that, but I am a urologist, okay? So it is uh, funny because I, I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a cardiologist, or, you know, I'm a urologist. So many of my patients are older men, okay, that come to check the, on their prostates. Uh, and uh, older men... Uh, is a very uh, at-risk population for metabolic syndrome, as you know. Mm -hmm. So many of my patients, you know, I check on their prostates, their prostates are fine, and then I tell them, okay, your prostate is fine, but the rest of her, uh, you know, <laughs> the rest is, is pretty bad. You have pre-diabetes, you have hypertension, you have belly fat. So has any one of your doctors ever talked to you about nutrition? And 90% of the time, they will tell me, no, nobody never mentioned nutrition. <laughs> it's amazing, but it's the truth. And you know, Sam, I think doctors do not mention nutrition for two reasons. Because, well, you know, first, they don't know anything about it. They never learned anything about it on medical school. I never learned anything about it on medical school, okay? Mm. And second, because when they actually mention it, uh, it never works because no matter how much you try into, uh, you know, applying the food pyramid, it won't give you results. I mean, you are telling people to eat 60% refined carbs, basically. <laughs> you know? So uh, after you, I say, a cardi cardiologist or a primary care physician, and for many years you tell people, you know, just follow this leaflet which has the food pyramid on it, and come next month, and people come to you heavier and more sick, you just give up and, you know, give them prescriptions. Yeah, it's crazy, and this kind of, this is a um, kind of a, a formula that's, that's around the world um, at the moment still, but it's, it's starting to, to move towards more about, right, let's discuss nutrition, because doctors are going out of their way to, to read these books and sort of like look at the evidence and say, hey, there's kind of some really good points being made here and maybe we should start looking into, into nutrition. I don't know if you've seen the stuff done by Dr. Asim Hotra um, over here, um, but he, he's making a real push to get hospital food to be you know, the best that it can be because that's kind of where, where your men have become healthy. Right, so what, what are the hospitals like in Brazil? Is the food good or is there still kind of, you know, refined carbohydrates absolutely everywhere? Uh, Sam, uh, you know, I, I've had the experience of having a patient of mine that was already uh, on a uh, low carb, real food diet and then this guy checked in into the hospital because of a, you know, kidney stone. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so, he asked me if I could somehow have the hospital feed him real food, low carb. It was impossible. It, 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 you cannot do it because if you put uh, a diabetes diet, they will give him bread. Okay, it's brown bread, but they will give him bread and fruit juice, you know. Uh, and then you, <laughs> then you put, okay, uh, a diabetes, uh, gluten-free diet and then they will give him a gluten-free bread. You know, uh, it is impossible. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's, it's really sad, you know. Dr. Mohotra is a, a, a hero of mine, and uh, if I could, you know, someday uh, do half in Brazil of what he has done in England, uh, it would be great. 
Fantastic. Well, hopefully, kind of, yeah, things will will move that way, and and you'll be kind of one of the pioneers uh, there that's going to make a real change in Brazil. Um, and kind of going back to that double burden of malnutrition and obesity, what what do you see as being the solution for that? Because obviously, just just before we get, get into it, obviously, um, these are these are really kind of poverty-stricken communities, so they can't have kind of you know salmon and and spinach and stuff like. Well, they could have spinach, but you know the salmon and stuff like that. It's going to be really really difficult for them. So how are you going to kind of solve that? Yeah, you know, uh, it, it is actually a tough question because, of course, if you are uh, concerned with uh, food security, which means uh, assuring that people will have food on their table. Uh, 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 quality kind of goes, uh, you know, second. But uh, I've uh, talked to people, uh, and I've talked to uh, less well-to-do people, uh, and when they question me on how to do a real food, lower-carb uh, diet on a low budget, uh, I always give them, you know, real life examples of, you know, you don't need to buy uh, the, the the premium steak. You can, uh, you know, uh, pressure cook uh, some uh, not premium uh, meat, uh, and this is cheap. Okay, uh, you can uh, eat poultry, which is cheap here. Okay. Eggs uh, are a very, very uh, good uh, protein source and nutrition source, uh, and you don't real, really need a lot of money to buy eggs. And many of those people in favelas, they actually have chickens, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, but the problem is uh, those people, they have this ingrained notion that they cannot eat more than two or three eggs per week, okay? Wow. I yeah, <laughs> because that's what they have been hearing for, you know, decades. Uh, uh, so when you asked me about the, um, the, um, uh, the, the new guidelines that w will fortunately come into place in Brazil, okay, the, uh, it, things will change, but at the moment, what those people, uh, they, they don't read the guidelines, you know, from the government, they watch TV. And on TV, the RDs are telling them that cholesterol is dangerous and they should avoid uh, eating eggs and saturated fat. So what they will eat? They will eat rice and they will eat noodles, which are the actually, you know, the cheapest foods they can buy. So uh, changing the, the, the food environment is important, but, uh, you know, putting out the message that real food is actually good for you that you can raise your chickens and eat their eggs and eat the chicken, you know, that this is good for you. Uh, so uh, w what probably would be uh, important is uh, for people to know that they can uh, actually grow their own food. You know, the, uh, you, we are talking about these favelas. So as I told you, they have their chickens, they have their backyards, okay? So it doesn't need to be expensive. Uh, there is a, a documentary uh, that uh, I can uh, share uh, with you, the YouTube link, so you can post for your listeners. Uh, and, and this documentary, it has subtitles in English, uh, and it, it is actually sad because uh, they show people uh, deep in the rainforest in Brazil uh, buying uh, processed fruit from a floating supermarket from Nestlé, okay, really? it's the, oh my. it is a floating supermarket in the Amazon River, deep, deep in the forest. So those people, they don't need to buy any food, okay, they have access to everything. They have a lot of fish, they, uh, they have a lot of land to plant and, you know, uh, but they are buying processed food and baby formula, for God's sake, from Nestlé. Seriously, that's terrible, isn't it? Like, you know, the, the, the one place that you'd think that hasn't been touched by a multinational organization is 
right deep in the Amazon, <laughs> you know. But Nestle have found a way by getting a floating supermarket. That's terrible. They, there must be so much nutrition around them with the fish and kind of the the wild fruits and vegetables that are kind of around them. And not to mention the fact that, you know, surely the Amazon soil is probably the most nutritious soil on the planet. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, that's one of those places in which you can actually be a hunter-gatherer, right? Because the forest actually provides, uh, but, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's terrible. So uh, this is a documentary very, very worth, worth uh, watching. Yeah. Yeah. Please, please um, send that link over. Um, and if you if you're watching this on the YouTube channel, you'll be able to kind of what like click on the uh, on the banner that's just coming up now, kind of where my hands are. Um, but if you're on the on the podcast, if you go to our blog, um, and if you go to smashthefat.com forward slash blog, and then find um, this this very interview on the blog there, then it'll be in the listings there. Perfect. Um, pe people can watch it there. Um, that's fantastic, Dr. Sute. Um, so um, we've kind of come come to the end of beating the bulge in Brazil. Is there any other kind of wise words that you'd like to, to hand out to your fellow Brazilians about how you can kind of change the world and, and what your perspective is as a Brazilian on the rest of the world's kind of health and nutrition? Uh, well, uh, I, I think we are actually living in a very important moment, uh, and I kind of believe that many years from now, we'll look at 2013, 2014 as a tipping point. Uh, I, I do believe that. Uh, and I think people like you, Sam, are making a difference uh, by, you know, spreading the news, uh, being on social media, uh, and uh, I think... I always tell my patients and when I do some, you know, talks and I talk to the audience and I tell them, you know, every one of you uh, will help spread it uh, because it is a grassroots movement actually, but it's making a difference, in, you know, in mass media. So uh, I think we'll change that for the better and I think uh, we will, uh, some years from now, look at those dark ages between the 70s and the early 2000s, you know, and look and how how was it possible that we, you know, were so blind for so many decades? Yeah, absolutely, and I'm sure I'm sure it will actually be called the Dark Ages as well. <laughs> yeah, but, but thankfully we are coming out of the darkness into the light. Hopefully, with people like yourself, Doc, and it's really really appreciated that you you guys are kind of looking at the evidence and then kind of seeing right, there's, there's a real issue here. And then you're coming out on sort of like, on things like blogs and on TV, um, and you're really going to start a discussion going. And that's what it's all about, starting discussions. Um, and then we create progress from there. OK. Absolutely. I and mean, there's only one more thing to do, uh, Jose, and that's to hear a smash it out from Dr. Suto all the way from Brazil. So on three, I want you to shout, smash it out. Okay. So one, two, three. Let's mash it up. Hey, that's awesome. <laughs> cool. Um, and if you want to check out uh, Dr. Suto's blog, uh, make sure you go to www.lowcarb-paleo.com.br. And if you want to check out Why We Get Fat by Gary Torbs, um, Dr. Suto's um, inspiration, uh, if you want to grab it on the Amazon UK store, go to smashthefat.com forward slash fat UK. Uh, and if you're in the US um, and you want to get it from the Amazon US store, go to smashthefat.com forward slash fat US. It's a great read and it's kind of the starting point where I say everybody should kind of begin their journey into health and nutrition. Um, were there any other things that you'd like to share uh, with the audience today, Jose? Um, no, I think it's fine, and I want to thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to your listeners, and it was a, a great talk. Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Jose. Much, <laughs> much appreciated. Um, thank again, you. Keep me updated with everything that's going on in Brazil, um, and, and when you kind of break through um, all, the, all the nutrition um, nutrition BS that's out there that you kind of <laughs> then uh, yeah we'll, we'll get you back on and then have you have you as the savior of Brazil. 
<laughs> okay, let's let's try to do just a little bit of that. Yeah, 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 just a little bit would be good, for sure. Yeah. So, fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Sito. Much appreciated, and uh, I hope to hear from you soon. Thank you. Take care. Bye.